Hey folks, this is Max and welcome to another workflows video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the list reduce card. Now what it does is that it takes a list, the card takes a list of values and then returns a single value, all right? Now, the best way to really see how it works is to look at an example and I'm gonna show you three examples. Now, this video is based on this blog post here that I'm going to also link uh, in the video. But again, if you prefer to read, you can always uh, go here. You can also, other uh, programming languages also have a reduce function. Uh, and so you can also read about uh, just Google and see how it works. But as I said, the basic idea is that uh, you take a list of values and then reduce and thus the name to a single value. Okay. So, but let's see how it works. So let's look at, we're going to look at three examples. Uh, so I've got the three examples here. And uh, so the first one is that we're going to see how to add numbers. Let me open this flow. Oh, let's reload. All right, working better. Um, so I've got a list of numbers here, uh, one through five. And then I'm using list reduce here. Let me open the helper flow. So the way this works is that you do need to have a helper flow. And I'm passing in the list. And this is the helper flow. And of course, most of the logic is happening in the helper flow. So let's see how it works. Now, again, the goal is to add the numbers, all the numbers here. Um, so before we jump into helper flow, so again, the list reduce has... Um, a list, this is the list of values, uh, has the helper flow. And then the helper flow, and then this is what we're passing. Um, so this is the each uh, item from the list. And then right here, so this is important, this is called memo. So this is the, when it runs for the first time, this is the original value. And then when the reduce function is running or the reduce card is running, it's going to pass its current value into uh, this field into a memo. Okay. And again, let me, let's run through, let's see how the flow works. And then it's going to, I think, make more sense. So let's go here. So this is the helper flow and it has two parameters. It has the current number. This is the current number from the list. And again, this is the memo number. So it has the initial value. And then this number for each run is then passed into this memo again. So in a way, it's like a, like, like a recursion also. So we calculate the current value and then we pass it into memo and then add the next number, okay? So we take the current number, we take the previous number, add them, and then that's the result we're sending back. And then we repeat the same process until the list is, uh, the whole list is processed. Well, let me run this. So I'm gonna click test. I know it could be a little bit confusing at first. All right, so this is the result. This is the main flow. And we can see I've got the list, the list was passed. And then the sum of all the numbers is 15, all right? So which is correct. So we got one, this is three, this is six, uh, plus four is 10, and then we got 15. All right, but let's see how the helper flow works because that's, of course, again, that has the core of the logic. And this is the run that I did here. This is the first run. And let's see here. So the current number is one. Wait, let me go back. So that's the current number is one. And then the memo number is zero, right? And if I go back here, let me go back to, so this is the initial value is zero, so that's being passed, okay. Um, and then what I do is I simply add the number. So one plus zero is one and then one. So now this number is going to be passed back into this card. As a memo variable, it's going to be here and then it's going to pick the next number from the list. So let's click on the next run. So we got two, right? That's the next number and we can look here. That's the next number from the list. But notice the memo now, that's the previous value that we added. 
Okay, so if I go back here for a second, this one, let me click on the next, was passed here. So I'm taking two plus one is three, and then I'm returning this. Okay, so the helper flow returns a value. So this value is again is going to be sort of fed into the memo variable, and then it's going to pick up the next number. So let's click on the next one. So three, right? That's the memo. I'm sorry, that's the current value. I'm sorry, that's the current value. In this case, they are they're the same. And then three, right? That's when we added two plus one. And then three plus three is six. Now on the next run, six is going to be set for memo. Let's look here. So we got six. And then we pick up the next number from the list, which is four. And then we add the two numbers, four plus six is 10. We're returning 10. Now 10 is going to be fed into the memo on the next run. And then we're gonna pick up the last number uh, from the list. And the last number is five. Let's go back here, click on the last run. And that's the last number. And then this is the memo. And then 10 plus five right here, 10 plus five is 15. And we're done, we'll process the entire list. And then of course, this is the main flow. This is the result, all right? So that's how it works. I think if you look at an example, it, um, I think a little bit easier to, to understand. All right. Um, so this is one example. This is where we're adding numbers. Uh, you can do so you can do some. Uh, let's look at another example. Let me turn these two flows off. And this one I'm gonna find, we're gonna find the biggest number. And let's open the main, let me close this. Let's open the main flow first. And I've got again, I've got a list of numbers and I'm passing it to this reduce. I've got the helper flow. And this is the current item, that's the current number. And then the memo is zero again. And my goal is now to find the biggest number here. Let's open the, the helper flow. Now, one thing I also say is that um, this, these examples are more or less, you know, um, I guess not very complicated. We're just, you know, adding numbers or comparing numbers. But in the helper flow, you can really write any any logic you want. So you can have, of course, a lot more logic, a lot more cards. Um, but at the end, you need to return a, a value that also, I think, um, if I remember correctly, it should match the type. So the type should match the memo type. So that's important. Uh, but let's see how this works. Um, here I'm comparing two values. And I'm saying if current number is greater than memo, then the value of this card will be current number. Otherwise, it will be memo. And I am passing the value here. And I'm doing this each run, and I'm comparing the number. And every time on the return, I'm going to have the biggest number um, uh, currently in the list. And that's how I will find the biggest number. But again, let's run this so we can see how this works. So let's click test. All right, so you can see the numbers 60 is of course the, the biggest number. Let's go here, flow history. All right, and right here. So this is the first run, okay? So notice again, this is the current number and this is the memo. Uh, this, the initial value is zero. So what I'm doing is that I'm saying, hey, I'm comparing 20 and zero. So if, is 20 bigger than zero? If yes, if true, then this is the value. If false, this is the value, but it's true. So I'm setting the output of the card to 20 and then returning it. So now I'm 20 is going to be passed into memo and the flow is going to pick up the next number uh, in the list. So I'm gonna click the next run. So the next number is, is 10. I can just go back to show you. Next number is 10. And memo is 20 from the previous run. And I'm saying, um, is 10 greater than 20? So if it's true, return 10. Otherwise, return 20. 
right? So we know that 10 is less, so we're returning 20. And then 20 is returned. On the next run, we're passing this to be to memo again. So let's look at the next one. And we have 60. That's the current number. And this is the memo from the previous run. That's the number, I should say, from the previous run. And we're saying um, value A is greater than uh, value B. If it's true, the result of this card is 60, which is true in our case. 60 is bigger than 20. We're returning 60. So this value will be fed into memo, and we're going to pick up the next number. Next number is 50 on the list, and the memo is 60. And we're doing the comparison again. If 50 is bigger than 60, then if it's true, return this value. But no, it's false. So we're returning 60. So the output of this card is 60. We're returning 60, and then 60 is going to be uh, fed into memo, um, right? Let's pick the next one. Uh, next one is 30 and 60. Same thing. 60 is, this is false. 60 is bigger. We're returning 60. And then on the last run, we've got 40. Right, let's look quickly at the numbers here. we got 40 here. And of course, same thing. 40 is not bigger than 60. So we're returning 60. This is the output of this card, which becomes the return from this helper flow. And we're done processing all the numbers. And then we found, as we can see here, 60, we found the biggest number. All right. So that's another example how uh, reduce works. Again, we're taking a list of numbers and reducing the list to just uh, one value. All right, let's look at one more example. Let's go here. Let's close. Let me turn off this flow. And now this is not numbers based. This is going to be with uh, messages. So I'm going to turn this on and then turn this on. All right. Let me open. OK, so this is an example where you want to send a message, whether it's email or Slack or really anything. And you want to uh, sort of add users to the message. So you say, for example, the following users were activated today. And then you want to say user 1, user 2, user 3, user 4, and so on. Right. So again, least reduce can be used again uh, in this example. So this is the original message. This goes into memo. This is just a list of users. Probably in a in a real case, you would get the list of users from a search, for example, or filter function card. Uh, but this is just as an example. This is just a kind of a static list. Uh, I'm sending it to least reduce again. Uh, this is the helper flow. Uh, this is the current item, and this is memo. Right. Uh, that's the initial value, and also the the new value after each run. And then finally, we're going to see the message. Uh, <clears throat> here, uh, in the helper flow, I got the message, I got the memo, and then I'm just sort of concatenating in a way uh, the messages and then returning. Again, let's see how this works when we run it. Uh, so let's click test. All right, and so this is the result. You can see this is the final, oh, sorry, not the final, this is the final. This is the very final result. The following users were activated today. So we created this message. Let's go to helper flow and see how it works, how it looks. All right, 259. So this is the first item in the list, and this is the original the a value that was mapped or connected to memo, right? And then, this is just a compose card, and this is the output. I'm saying the following users plus the first user, and this is the return. Now, this is, again, this is going to be sort of fed into memo, and then we're going to pick up the next uh, item from the list. So let's look at the next item. Notice the next item is user 2. Now, the memo, that's the previous run. We now have the original message plus user 1. We're adding user two and then returning it. Now this is again going to be 
the value of memo. So let's see here, user three, and then this is the value from the previous run. And then we're adding user three, and this is the return. That's what the helper flow returns. And one more run, right? So this is going to be, again, this is the value for memo. And uh, we can see here, last message, last item, sorry, from the list. And uh, this is memo. Now we're adding user four, and this is the final result. Um, and then the final result is, of course, uh, here. All right. So this is how this reduce works. Um, I um, again, it might be kind of a a little bit, I guess, confusing. It was confusing for me at the beginning, but I, th I think if you run through these examples, either you can look at the video, or again, you can look at this blog post. Uh, you'll see how it works. Again, at a high level, you have a list of values, and you reduce the list to a single value. Again, that's why also why it's called reduce. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.